sustainable and globally competitive health industry. So we know that the EU health industry is innovative, sustainable and globally competitive. And that is thanks to the improved uptake of breakthrough technologies and innovation. But of course, we have to sustain this and we have to make sure that this system is more resilient and uh, that also we are less dependent on imports and, and uh, guarantee a healthcare system uh, with, the inter with the collaboration of uh, industrial players also. Of course, this has to take into account different elements like the, the sensitivity and the um, privacy of data that are very important, of course, also and coming into the system more and more and also the aspects of the, the green deals, so of course, the, the green production facilities, etc. So we have a number of, uh, of topics that uh, under this destination that we've proposed in the work program for 22 and I will quickly go over them. And after that, of course, we'll open the floor for questions from you, which uh, we will try to answer. So with colleagues from DG Research and Innovation, but certainly also colleagues from DG Connect, as well as the Joint Research Center, because these topics have been developed, of course, in the co-creation spirit. So the first topic to mention is enhancing cybersecurity of connected medical devices. So of course, here, the cybersecurity is an issue that is coming up more and more and the medical devices dealing with data is an important element. We have to connect the two, make sure that our data are secure and, and safe. Then the second topic under this destination is scaling up multi-party computation, data anonymization techniques and synthetic data generation. So again, a, a large focus on the data that become available and of course dealing with them in the most optimal way. Make use of, of the richness that is in there, but also make sure that that is treated in the right way. The third uh, topic under this work program is new pricing and payment methods for cost effective and affordable health innovations. So of course we know that there are new tools and solutions coming towards us. But of course, the payment methods need to, to keep pace in, uh, in making sure that the uptake is facilitated and, and that our health systems are able to cope with, uh, with the new solutions. Also, of course, taking into account the financial situation. So I think there's a second slide on this. Yes, there we are. So the fourth topic is setting up a European Smart Health Innovation Hub. Because really, you have to, to move forward here and making use of, of what we have, but also doing that in a coordinated way. And therefore, an innovation hub is a, a, a way forward there. And the last one is setting up European electronic health record exchange format ecosystem. So also, of course, we know that the health records are very important, that the exchange of data is important there. But of course, there are a whole series of conditions that and situations that you have to take into account for this. So we have prepared a video also for this destination. So I hope that you had the chance to have a look at that where we explain a bit more in detail these um, five different call topics for our work program of 22. So that leaves me now to open the floor actually to you, to the questions that, that we hope that, that you pose to us so that we can help you to be better prepared and, and better informed for the preparation of proposals to be submitted to these uh, five call topics. And as I said, my colleagues from the GRC, from Connect and from Digital Research and Innovation will help us to, uh, to answer your questions in the most optimal way. Arion, the slide is coming soon. We are going to share it uh, shortly. Okay, thank you.
So at the end of the day, it's probably difficult for everybody, including the IT systems, to keep up with everything. Yeah, Leon, we are getting there. It's loading, so bear with us. Okay. As you said, sometimes the systems. <laughs> Thank you very much. Here we are. So the first question here that, that we will take is the one on the top here. So are there specific criteria to be respected for the creation of EU, uh, for reference EU repository of ready to market solutions? So I would give the floor to my colleagues to, to deal with that question. I think it's Irina, you want to come in on this one, right? Yes, hi, uh, thanks a lot uh, and hello to everybody. Indeed, the intention is to create a repository which builds upon existing repositories uh, of ready to market solutions criteria. A minimal criteria would be that they are ready for uh, deployment. So technology um, readiness level of at least six or seven that they have been successfully deployed uh, in a specific uh, facility, location, community, region, and why not a member state? Um, of course, uh, to be interoperable um, and scalable also in another health and care environments, um, and of course, privacy preserving. So uh, that would be uh, a minimal criteria. Of course, if possible to come from uh, various EU member states or regions uh, and to have as, as much as good examples coming from different uh, locations. Thank you. Thank you, Irina. So the next question is um, on the EA, EEHRXF. So the, the topic that, that uh, where Scott asked, should proposals aim at a public infrastructure based on these EEHRXF principles and to what these principles should refer to more precisely. So of course it would be very nice for one of my colleagues, I think from DG Connect, to give more information on this topic and, and these specific principles. Hi, Arjen. Hi, hi, colleagues. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to take this question. Thanks for the question. Uh, so, uh, on the 6th of February 2019, the European Commission uh, published a recommendation on a European electronic health record exchange format. So these principles that are referred to in the text of this topic refer to the third pillar of a framework that has been set uh, in, in that, sorry, in the, to the first pillar of a framework that has, has been set out in that recommendation. Just to give a, a few examples, I can uh, uh, so uh, mention a comprehensiveness, uh, machine readability, citizen-centric by design, data protection, and confidentiality. Um, so for more details, I would recommend checking the text of that recommendation, as well as its annex that are made available online on the Commission's website. Thank you very much, Reza. So the next question we have, and of course I invite you to send more questions in there. So this is your possibility for, uh, for my colleagues to answer the questions you might have and to of course better prepare for, the, uh, for submitting proposals to these calls. So the next question is uh, regarding the topic 1304. So which type of consortium is expected for this call? Are only national innovation hubs eligible? 
are our other type and sizes of actors also eligible? So uh, th thanks for this question. I think it's for, for the, my topic on the European uh, Smart Innovation Hub. It is. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, well, the aim is to have a consortium which is as comprehensive as possible. No, the, it, is, uh, it is not aimed only at national innovation hubs at all. Um, all kinds of trans, uh, tran technology transfer organizations, um, uh, research transfer organizations, accelerators, yeah, knowledge hubs, um, regional, uh, out, let's say, um, organizations which represents various regions so that uh, if we could imagine that, uh, organizations that have um, a very wide outreach through various regions, um, it is very open. It is also important to have um, authorities, uh, not only, uh, and SMEs and, uh, to have as wider as possible representativeness uh, of all stakeholders, uh, which are normally needed when we are uh, reaching uh, or trying to reach scalability. Um, I would also say that um, um, in, in the call, there is a specific uh, reference to build upon some existing um, uh, repositories, those that were already created in the last decades throughout the European Innovation Partnership on Active and Healthy Aging and uh, the various reference sites uh, throughout Europe, uh, over 100, but not only. Uh, so very important to, uh, to make sure to create um, a mechanism which includes um, repositories and and um, networking and um, exchange of practices uh, mechanisms that have proof that are working already and to um, uh, to aim to create a sustainable hub which will be sustainable also after the duration of the action so that that's of um, of uh, utmost importance. Thank you. Thank you, Irina. So the next question that comes up is, can national authorities for pricing and reimbursement decisions be members of applicant consortia? I think this refers to the, the topic 1303, which is on the new pricing and payment models. So for that, I would like to invite my colleague uh, Leslie from Santé to, uh, to answer this question. Leslie, are you online? Yes, I am online. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can see this. <laughs> Thank you for this question. So uh, as indicated in the topic text, applicant consortia should include regulators and public entities that are in charge of attributing value tag tags to health technologies meaning that applicant consortia not only can, but should include entities such as pricing and reimbursement authorities. And their input is seen as crucial to tackle the issues described in the topic. Over. Thank you, Leslie. So the last question that we have here, and really I invite you to submit more questions if you have them. Of course, our proposal is expected to describe the data set they plan to work on and how to ensure access to data. So um, I'm not sure what this, uh, which topic this refers to. It might refer to topic 1304, but. Um... Uh, in, uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Saila Rinne. Um, it looks like that this question refers to the topic uh, 1302, which is about uh, data. So it's about scaling up multi-party computation, data anonymization techniques, and synthetic da uh, data generation. So it's, it is about creating a, a GDPR-compliant data uh, processing, data analytics methods, um, and to really um, advance the state of the art of, of these technologies so that the developers have um, at their dispos disposal um, more 
um, efficient tools um, and also that the underlying data which is extremely important otherwise it's not really possible to uh, advance the state of the art so uh, indeed the pro proposals should include a clear description of the data sets that are available for the consortium and for the project and they should also um, describe how the access to the distributed the uh, testing data sources uh, and how the appropriate scale can be reached as described in the topic text. Thank you. Thank you very much, Saila. So a new question coming in on topic 1304 is good for profit company, a large or small or medium sized uh, enterprise apply for this uh, call topic. So I think this is for a call topic for my colleagues of DG Connect. So I hope that. Yeah, one. I think it is for me. Thank you, Irina. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, SMEs can apply as part of a consortium with, of course, um, the purpose, of course, to to uh to promote uh, the achievement of the goals of this topic which is of of uh, of course of of the interest of uh e of so of all eu citizens and not not for profit but yes of course smes or uh, any other companies or uh, also why not uh, some um yeah um, i would say also testing um uh, facilities, uh, for example, could apply as well. So yes, the answer is yes. Okay, thank you, Irina. So we can wait or one or two minutes to see if there are more questions from your side that we would happily uh, answer. And if not, of course, there's always a possibility to contact us uh, via the contact points and, and that way we will be able to reply to you to questions that might come up at a later stage. So we will just keep this open for two more minutes uh, to have a possibility for you to submit new questions, but uh, I do not want to hold you any longer in case there are no new questions at the moment. And as I said, then there's of course still the possibility to contact us at a later stage. Okay, it seems that there are no more questions coming in uh, right now. So that drives me to, to thank you for uh, paying interest into our info day. And of course, we've been uh, very happy to, to try to give you the information and try to answer your questions to in all the different destinations. And I also, of course, would like to thank my colleagues that, uh, that have been helping us out with the preparation of this day, as well as, of course, answering all the questions that uh, that you came up with. So from my side, uh, thank you. Have a very nice evening and uh, good luck with the preparation of the proposals.